Okay, uh, the last topic of this chapter deals with infinite limits. And uh, this is not as forbearing as it may sound. We've pretty much done a lot of that already with the uh, vertical asymptotes, uh, the ones that are going up and down away from the x-axis. Um, we're going to do some problems, and you can see it's very similar to what we've done before, only now that we're going to work, we're actually going to take more of a graphical approach to this than we are a mathematical approach to it, although there's definitely some mathematics involved in this. So I'd like if we uh, go to page 88 and take a look at problem number 33. It wants to know the limit of x minus 3 over x minus 2 as x approaches 2 from the positive side. So we're going to come, we're going to graph this, and we're going to come from the left side, and we're going to see where it goes. Now we know that we're going to get 0 for a denominator. So we know it's going to be some form of infinity. The real question is, is it going to be infinity going to the negative side, or infinity going to the positive side? And this is where the graph really helps. And so if you punch this into your calculator for y1, erasing all the other stuff, and make sure you hit um, zoom 6 when you graph this, um, you're going to get a graph that looks something like this. So here is x equals 2, and this is what we're looking at here. And we'll see a curve doing this. You see it's not touching 2, it's asymptotic to 2. And then it's going to start over on the negative side over here and then come this way. So this is definitely your asymptote right here. Neither curve is touching. It's going to both approach it very closely, but never even uh, until you get to absolute infinity, which of course is virtually impossible, you will have an intersection. But that is not what's going to happen here, not, not in reality at least. So when we take a look at this, it says from the positive side. So we're going to start over here and follow this thing as it goes down, and you notice that it's going towards the negative infinity side. So the limit is negative infinity. There's your answer. Now, if you've done this mathematically, you may not have been able to tell that. The graph makes all the difference in the world, especially when it's telling you which direction, because if it said negative, the answer would have been positive infinity. So direction is important for this, for how we're analyzing the, where this graph is going to. Number 35. We have x squared uh, square over x minus 9. We're trying to find the limit for that. So we're looking at this equation. Um, you graph it, and you get something that looks like this. Now, you can notice right here, if we were to factor this out, we're going to get x minus 3. Oh, wait a minute. That's just x minus. Never mind. Just kidding. I think it's supposed to be x squared minus 9. So yes, it is supposed to be x squared minus 9. So I wasn't kidding. I just forgot to put the square there. So that's x minus 3, x plus 3. Okay? And we're asked to find the limit as x approaches 3 from the positive side. So, what we do know is going to hit uh, infinity somewhere at 3 and negative 3. And if we plot this into our graph, and you see indeed, we get this bizarre looking graph here. Now this will make this negative 3 here. We'll make this positive 3 here, and what we see happening is this. We've got this, and then we get this goofy looking thing right here, and then we've got this coming back out from up there and across over there. Of course, that's my artistic rendering. I would consider myself a Picasso of mathematical graphs because uh, I try to draw it one way and it looks absolutely nothing like it or doesn't kind of resemble it. But I always didn't want, you know, I always thought that people who put artwork in their offices, uh, like doctors, uh, you know, um, dentists, whatever, I think the worst thing you could do, particularly if, if you were uh, into uh, some kind of facial surgery to uh, repair people, uh, if you had a Picasso painting in your office, I think um, you'd lose a lot of business. You might, you know, showing off you have a lot of money, that's nice, but. I wouldn't want to do that, but that's just me. Anyway, so, so here's the deal here. It says we're trying to approach 3 from the positive side, okay? Well, here's 3 right here, so that means that we're going to have to go 
from the positive part as it approaches 3. So it's going in that direction. So that means our limit is going to be positive infinity. The limit is positive infinity. Or just plain infinity. You don't have to put the positive sign there. Thirty-seven. Uh, for this one, we got the limit of uh, x squared plus two x minus three over x squared plus x minus six. As x approaches negative three from the negative direction. Okay. Now, this is interesting because. Um, this is a removable uh, discontinuity or reaction here, or not, I hear any a scientist, equation here, or a fraction. Uh, if I were to fa uh, factor these, I would have x plus 3, x minus 1 here, and I would have x plus 3, x minus 2 here. So as you can see, this is removable. Now, here's the power of that statement. Yes, you cannot get x equals negative 3. That is not possible. But what you'll find that you're actually going to get is a hole there. Okay? And you also cannot get x equals positive 2. That has not been removed, so that is going to be where your, your vertical asymptote is going to occur. And when you graph it out, you see that's exactly what happens. Now, again, we're dealing with a rather uh, non-micro collection of points on our calculator, so it may not jump out at you. But when I graphed this, I kind of saw where the hole was. So here's, here's the thing here. It's x equals positive 3, let's say, or negative 3, rather. Let's say that's negative 3 right there. Um, and then this is positive 2 over here. And we know, according to the graph, we've got this coming down here at 2. And this is coming over here, across this way. And then it goes down like so. But at this right here, you have a hole. If you don't have an asymptote there. It's just, its discontinuity is still there. But instead of it doing weird things like we saw in the last graph, it continues on. And on my calculator, it showed kind of a shift in levels. All right? But this was more true to what we have seen up to this point. But since we're approaching negative 3 from the negative side, that means we're coming from the negative side over here towards the negative 3. And that simply means then that the limit for that can be figured out by looking at x minus 1 over x minus 2 and replacing the x with negative 3. So we know what the y value of that pole is going to be. And so this turns out to be negative 3 minus 1 over negative 3 minus 2. That's a negative 4 and negative 5. So that's 4 fifths. So we have a hole at the point negative 3, positive 4 fifths, or 0.8. And we have a vertical asymptote right here, too.